Welcome to the Road Less Travel podcast, where we highlight and interview individuals who have taken the road less travel and pursuing non-traditional careers with hopes of inspiring you, the viewers, along your journey. And today, I'm with my co-host, Dez Arnez, What's good? and our special guest, Mr. Don P himself. It's a legend, man. Well, man. man. Appreciate you. Appreciate, appreciate you. Appreciate you guys. Up. My guy. Man. Look, man, you know, uh, the whole point of this podcast is to shed light on people who just have careers you typically wouldn't think of, or if you do, you don't even know how to get into it. Yeah. So I don't, I don't want to give you this long, you know, introduction because how do we even introduce you? You wear so many hats. I feel like it would kind of be disrespectful to be like, yo, this is Dom. He does festivals. You know what I'm saying? So, so I do want to touch on that though. So if you could kind of tell us who is Dom P where like the, the OU or even a little bit before that, just like give us the introduction to how you even got to where you are now yeah. as we get to it. Right on. Um, so Dominic Petrosi, uh, Columbus native, been around this way since 89. Um, like Rio said, went to Ohio University, connected with you guys by way of the event music festival industry. Uh, but along that journey, you know, took multiple different angles and different roads to get to where we are today. Um, I think the easiest and kind of uh, to dumb it down in a sophisticated way, but still to be uh, you know, pretty baseline is I'm a curator of events and culture and dot connecting of the who's who within not only our communities, but surrounding communities throughout the state and throughout the Midwest and nationally. Um, but I've kind of found myself in a unique position over the years, pushing 21 years. You know, my rookie year was LeBron's rookie year. That's kind of how I can always figure out where it's at when everything started, um, you know, but we've kind of been blessed in a way to connect with uh, a certain echelon of folks who kind of started from humble beginnings, like all of us did, who have somehow, some way forged the path and really created and positioned themselves as what I would consider elite individuals in whatever their craft and trade is. Nah, that's fire. And, and me and Dez have, we've got to, because of you, We've got to partake in some crazy festivities. And one of the like one of my very first memories, actually one of the very first times I like linked up with Tay and, you know, Jay Wood and everybody. We rode down to OU for Numbers Fest yeah. to see this guy uh, <laughs> perform at the fest. <laughs> That's boys. So so as we get into that, oh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. That was uh, early. MGK. That was yeah, yeah. MGK. So early. I think I, Craig jumped in the crowd with his underwear yeah. on. It's like crazy. <laughs> Hit a split. Like, yeah, for sure. Life, life wasn't the same after that. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm doing this party thing all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and look, I, I want to get into that, like, because that wasn't the very, you know, that was like one of our very, very first moments, but you had already been putting in the work. So even yeah. like, how did Number Fe Numbers Fest come about? Like, how did you come up with the idea to do it? And then how was the execution process yeah. on following that off? Yeah. So, you know, before we kick this off, we were, you know, in the other room here in Soul Classics, just shooting the bull, joking around mm -hmm. about Cabana Club, 161 Cleveland Avenue. Yeah, no, no. Uh, that plays very well. Man. Yeah. That's, that was my rookie. I, 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 yeah, that's where I got my break into the end. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's, it's one of those things that throughout my college career at Ohio University, um, Number Fest was never a predestined, predetermined scenario. Um, we were throwing parties at bars and, you know, kind of the hip hop scene of Columbus was bubbling. You know, Catch City Records was this thing. You know, guys like Young Wise was mm -hmm. around. You had, was. Yeah, you had, you know, Stoney Burks was doing his thing with, um, before Fly You was Fly You, they were called Basic Element. Mm -hmm. You know, and Ivan and Swift, they had their studios with their dads in the basements of the cribs over behind McDonald's off of um, Mount, I can't remember the street, the street name, but like, Mount Vernon, maybe. My, maybe in Mount Vernon, right by Beechcroft. Oh, okay, um, no, that's no, definitely no, not Mount yeah. um, You know, but, so I was doing these parties and I was bringing this scene from Columbus down to Ohio University. And everybody knows, you know, aside from the athletes, you know, OU wasn't necessarily the most culturally diverse student body. Right. But in 2002, 2003, 2004, hip hop was everything, you know, like Dipset and Hove and Ye and just the amount of hip hop that we were listening to in bar scenes. That's all anybody ever listened to. Yeah. 
you know, so bringing these guys to come down, we were hosting parties, we were doing these little shows and it just kind of became a thing for me. I'm like, okay, you know, I have no talent when it comes to actual performance, but I do have the ability to bring talented folks that are in my network down, let them get an opportunity to perform in front of kids that they normally wouldn't be in front of. It wasn't Cabana Club, you know, but they weren't splitting time between Dockside Dolls and the <laughs> club, you know, but they were coming down, shooting down 33 East. And this is before the bypass existed. So you had to drive through Nelsonville and it was like just this whole different time. And, um, you know, so that's kind of how the music thing for me started. And then the summer going into my senior year, I was interning for this company that produced Red, White and Boom through a family friend. So I was just doing remedial grunt work. You know, I was just a mule and, and I was helping them do whatever had to be done. But I kind of saw the idea of like, all right, we were doing these parties inside these these bars in Athens. I saw the stuff happening in Columbus, kind of Scully's, had a few shows. I was kind of on the outside looking in. But I just kind of learned the basics of what it took to produce a large scale event. And I always joked, I'm like, really, you just need some porta johns, some fencing and some cops and you can do whatever <laughs> the heck you want to do. You know, so that was kind of for me that summer, you know, I was living with my sister up in New Albany. She had this apartment. God bless her. She allowed me to stay in the spare bedroom. So I'd have to go back to my parents. And then, you know, we were just being 21 year old kids and we were staying up late and we were doing what we do. And then we just kind of started to plot like, all right, you know, is there an opportunity for us to kind of throw a larger event, something outside like Red, White and Boom, but do it in Athens. And that was really the genesis of Number Fest and what became known as just one fest because it was one day. It was one time. It was one and done. I was graduating a few weeks later. So we put together this party. And, you know, I've told this story a million times and I, everybody that, that will watch this in my circle, they're like, bro, enough already. 21 years later, <laughs> we, heard, we heard it so many times, but for the folks that, that, that haven't maybe heard this, um, you know, it was as simple as it was five bucks if you knew me and 10 bucks if you did it. And that's how we threw the party. And we ended up having almost 4,000 kids pull up, you know, and it was a beautiful sunny day in the middle of May 2004. And we were graduating the last week of May, you know, so there was literally a 14 day gap. We threw this party and I wouldn't say it went off without a hitch, but we executed, you know, as rookies, we got it done. Nobody died. Gang of kids got arrested, but we didn't burn down anything in like the city, though they weren't super appeased and happy. But what we did, they really couldn't hold anything against me because we executed and we pulled it off. Um, and then the next day, and then, you know, as the story goes, that night, two, three in the morning, I'm counting this paper, you know, first time in my life, I'm sitting on 40 G's and I'm like, holding a bunch of fives and $10 bills. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you're a kid at that age, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, you coming up on something like that, you're like, right. All right, this is real. You know, yeah. I'm like, I'm holding on to it. I'm feeling, I'm looking at it. You know, so my ass, as as I was, I wasn't very smart. And, you know, it took me quite some time to really, you know, get my bearings about me and, and right, figure right. some things out. And we can all attest to that as, as what I would consider kind of elder statesman on high street. For but, sure. you know, I drove, I drove my GMC Jimmy up to Jermaine Cadillac or Jermaine Lexus, excuse me. And um, I, I pulled up and I bought a 2001 ES300 in cash. Like a dumbass. And I drove right back to Athens and I pulled up on Court Street in my Lex bubble, listening to Jay-Z. And I'm like, man, I made it. Y'all can't tell me nothing. And I was straight out of all the money that I, that I made. You know what I'm like? All right, well, you know, kids are like, when's two fests? And I'm like, man, there ain't no two fests. I'm out of here. You know, that was fun, man. And I was it was one fest. You know, so, you know, I'm sitting there. I got these job offers and I'm contemplating, like, what I want to do with my life. And I was bartending at OU and it's easy to make bread doing that down there. You know, we always had kind of a system. It was like one for the house, one for my pocket, you know? So you pour yeah. $4 pictures of Natty Light, right. you know? And it's like, all right, one for the house, one for my pocket. You do that 20 times a night, you made a good a $100 yeah. on top. And, um, you know, so I just started, started kind of just figuring out, like, really, what are we going to do? So I, I kind of just positioned myself. I ended up, choosing the route of staying in Athens. By doing so, I applied to grad school. By the grace of God, I got accepted to the sports administration program. And that was always my bag. Sports was my thing. I thought that I wanted to be, you know, working for a professional sports franchise, maybe being an athletic department for a D1 collegiate, you know, be it the Buckeyes or anything that would fall in line with sports, because that's just how we came up, you know. And it turns out that there was this very clear symmetry between sports and music you know there really was no difference between putting on a Gus Smacker basketball tournament and putting on a hip-hop show so I was sitting there and um 
again, just this is kind of one of the things that that I learned early on was I wasn't the smartest. I, I did not school well, but what I did do was create relationships. And that's something that I've kind of carried to this day as we're sitting here. You know, this is more than just three yeah, dudes yeah, sitting right. on a couch shooting sure. the bull. Like we have real relationships. Like yeah. we've been, you know, we know about each other's families. We know about each other's ups and downs yeah. and the things that we've all been through over the last 12, 13, 14 years. Um, but I was doing that early on. And it just so happens that this woman who was in charge of the admissions for the sports ad program was this really nice woman that would come to my happy hour when I bartended. Mm. I'd always tell her she looked nice. I'm like, you get your hair done today. You look good. You know, <laughs> it was more of just a thing. So she would tip me better. Come to find out she was the admissions lady for the sports ad program. Mm. And OU sports ad program was number one, number two in the nation with oh. USC. It was always flip-flopping mm. who was the best. So again, I had no right based on my GPA, based on my GMAT score. Like there was no way I was ever yeah. going to get into that program. But it turns out that the one lady that I was really nice to for the last two years was the, the one, the, the boss, you know, yeah. and she stamped wow. approval on that thing. <laughs> so crazy. because I was friendly with this, you know, mid fifties, Southeastern Ohio lady and her husband and their friend group that would come to my bar, that's how Numberfest truly became beyond one because that relationship, that seed that was planted, and that was kind of like the Harvard education from my time in Athens really was driven on. And I understood early that relationships is the whole name of the game. And it ain't. It and ain't. I was going to touch on that. Like, like, because there's so many gems you dropped within there that the one thing that stood out was the relationships. And even we talked about this last time was a curation. Mm -hmm. Like people think you have to be the artist. You have to be the designer if you work for the clothing brand. You have to be that person. But there's a lane for the person who just brings it all together. Yeah. You have a tasteful eye for knowing like, okay, if I pair this with this, it's going to amplify it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. just having that eye understanding, like even the eye for talent of seeing, okay, I see what these these fly union dudes is cooking up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh, and I sure. see what's going on over here and over here. If I bring these things together and take it down to OU... We got us a whole scene, exactly. you know what I'm saying, just off of that. Exactly. And by by bringing those pieces together, which also takes a very trustworthy and unique person for other people to trust you. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Everybody yeah. can't just call everybody and bring them together. Right. right. You know what right. I'm saying? So you having that that eye for curation, the the understanding of relationships and the value of, you know, people knowing that you're going to provide, you yeah. know, you're going to put, put together a good project, good yeah. work. Yeah. Those things... From very early in your career, mm -hmm. kick started yeah. who you became. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Not even even outside of the events, the admissions lady, just mm -hmm. understanding the value of relationships yeah. is Bro, it's 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 something that you can't really put a value to. You know, it's it's invaluable at the end of the day for me. And um again, it, I always say this, right? Like, God didn't grant me any true high level superpower by any means you know there are some people that are extremely blessed be it you know with musical talent or with artistic abilities or Six, with eight yes you know <laughs> right. lebron right. You, know, yeah, like, yeah, like, right. you know like some people are just you know it, a, a bit more blessed than others in that sense and for me what i found myself and the blessing that i received along the way was like just really being in and around those environments where those people existed and to your point, Rio, it, I, I kind of had a knack for, and again, it's earned, right? Like trust and respect is earned. It's not given. So you got to put up and you got to, you got to show up, you know, yeah. and, and you got to really, if you're going to say what you're going to do it, then you okay. best do it. And that yeah. was always kind of my sure. thing. I, I never, ever wanted to put something out into the universe and then not fulfill what I said I was going to do. And that's kind of how the relationships became. You know, it could be, be, they were built. That's how they grew. And that's how they were kind of solidified in stone. And, you know, I, I keep looking at, at both of you guys because I've seen, you know, Dez from Eight Fest, and that's 2012. That's 11 years ago. Right. You know, Super Fruity Hookah. Yeah, right. You, know, and, and, and you guys were, <laughs> yeah. you guys were on stage as performers. Right. And then Rio meeting you and, and seeing what you were doing with Duck and Jeffrey and Takma, even before that, though, yeah. you know, and, and throwing the parties. And then, Kind of again, it all circles back to this, you know, rural field in Athens that was a, a space for all of us as Columbus folks to kind of step outside the box slightly Absolutely. and create a path for ourselves. And it all led back 
to right. here, right? Back on high street, right? Man. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You know, so right. you know, I mean, for me, man, it's it's the story is it it it's you know it's it, it's a historical, unique, um, unprecedented tale, if you will, yeah. right? Like no one else has done it like that, absolutely. Um, and I don't like you know, and, and again, this is this isn't me trying to not be modest, but I don't think it can ever happen again like that. Because the world has changed drastically. Yeah, so drastically, bro. Yeah. And, you know, uh, really, even though even though your store wasn't quite on High Street, right? Industry Standard. Yeah, it was East State and High. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm saying. Like, that's, that's when I first met Dom before I knew Dom was Dom, right? You know what I mean? So he had that. Uh, you know, you was, you was uh, pressing up the We Run Ohio tees. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Kyle took me down there. I grabbed those. And then fast forward, I met Dom again. You know, we got cool. He, you know, let me and Craig come down and and, and perform, right? Be artists, man. I'm doing Craig, bro. <laughs> right? Yeah, I shout out to Craig, so man. Long, man. I, I love Craig. Crazy you know, yeah, show, you know. <laughs> but then, but then, a couple years later, then Dom gives me the opportunity to to be the main host uh, for Numbers Fest, bro. That was that was the biggest stage I've ever been on. That never. was crazy. And then, like after that, then he brought me back again, bro. And I was, you know, and then that really changed like the, the uh how i view like hosting and events completely like after i did numbers fest i really didn't want to do clubs no more because i'm like how do you go back to i mean you know nothing against it but it was like that was the biggest stage i've ever been on i never really been around that demographic Don was bro, just like bro right and then Don was just like damn bro just, just do what you do bro like just, yeah. just be who you are like you yeah. know how you are when we kick it with your high street no i went script. out there right yeah. and i went out there did it. and then people was like i'm coming backstage and people was like like no, like, who are you? Like, you like, well, she's like, gonna freeze up. Yeah, because like, I'll be backstage, I'll be chilling. And then when I get on stage, they'll be like, bro, you just turn into a different person. I'm like, bro, like, it's just, you see all them people out there and they just looking at you. Yeah. And then you get I this command the crowd. It's like, imagine, that's when the light go off. So yeah, man, yeah. it's crazy how I just, you know, come fast forward, man. Yeah. So. And, and I wanted to, um, I didn't want to just skip over the, the, that rural field that hundreds of thousands of people have yeah. partied and that all kind of stuff in. For somebody who wants to like looking for a space and they're in like a rural town or, you know, somewhere where they don't, there's not the obvious, you know, places where people throw events like yeah. Columbus Commons and stuff like right. that. Yeah. You see this field. Did you have any like ties or connections to it, or you just seen this field and you were like, yo, this is a perfect place for this event. Like, How do you go about like. Right. Like how, you, how did you like, vision that? Like, yeah. So the, the first iteration, it was called the Big Red Barn and this family in Athens, they're uh a farm family and they would rent that space out for kids to do like weekend long parties. If you wanted to have a fraternity sorority, um, like date party, or if you, it didn't matter. Like they were just trying to figure out ways to make paper. So I had attended an event there the year prior and I was kind of, it was in my peripheral. Like I knew it existed. I knew it was possible. Yeah. You know, so I figured out, got again, just through the network, uh, the owner of the bar that I was working at, I'm like, yo, you know, do you have a contact for the Irvin family? They own the big red barn. So we connected and I went out there, you know, and again, it's like culture shock in a sense, right? You know, like, you know, they think I'm a city slicker, you know, and they're good old boys, you know, like you, you pull down Irvin Road, which was, you know, their last name's Irvin. Oh, okay. And when I say it's Irvin Road, like it's like double wide house, trailer, double wide, like the whole Irvin's yeah. live. Right? Like that was their spot, you know, like that was their compound. And, you know, I'm pulling up and, you know, like I, I come out and they're like, you know, how, who are you? What can we help you with? And I'm like, y'all, I'm trying to rent your land. You know, and it kind of goes back to, I've been saying this for a, a long time, but I've really made it a point to like live by this motto is like search for the no, you know, in that sense of like, if you don't ask, right. you know, you don't know what you're leaving on the table. Mm, yeah. You know, so I just went out there. I was like, I want to rent the land. Yeah. You know, tell me no. And that, that that didn't happen. You know, they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, well, how much? And they're like, mm, five grand. And I'm like, all right, what's that give me? And they're like, I have to land for a week. And I'm like, bet, let's go. You know, and that was kind of it. And that's, yeah. that's really how it went. And again, as a 21-year-old kid, 5G is a lot of cash, right? So I didn't necessarily have it just to be like, here, bam, there, take it. Right. Um, but that went, and as we do, you know, you, you figure out how to find it, yeah. you know, and you go and get it. So like to to circle back on that is like anybody anywhere has the ability to curate a venue out of anything. Yeah. You know, we're sitting in Soul Classics right now. You guys have turned this joint into a venue. For sure. You know, back in when you guys had the Tagma shop, 
you know, prior to moving to the north side of High Street, you know, the OG Soul Classics, mm-hmm. you know, the the gallery hops and, and really turning the street and the sidewalks into a venue. Like there isn't any hindrance or I guess there could be from a, a, a not necessarily a logistics perspective, but from a municipality perspective, there could yeah. be, you know, pitfalls and hurdles that you got to clear in order to create a venue. Yeah. But really at the end of the day, man, like, you just need to be able to create a boundary and you say, this is it, you know, be it a fence, be it four walls and a roof, or just putting a man out front, a door guy yeah. on a stool, you yeah. know, being like, let me see your ticket, <laughs> you know, come on in. So like it, it, the, the whole idea of number fest being in that field, um, you know, it, it was super unique in that sense. And we started in a bar, you know, yeah. and then we grew it to a field and then, you know, you reference industry standard mm-hmm. and then we came full circle, you know, six years later and opened up a clothing store back in four walls, you know, and then it got to the point where I'll never forget we had IS the shop and it was like February of 20, 2008 and it was four fest time. And I had a homie that was still bartending in Athens and he hit me up in like February. He's like, what's up, man? You guys doing four fest? And I was like, man, I don't know. Like we got this store. like. Me and Sponto, like, we're trying to do this. Rest in peace. And he was like, are you crazy? Man, rest in peace, Sponto. But he was like, are you crazy? He's like, what do you mean you ain't doing four fest? And I'm like, ah, you're right. We got to do four fest, right? <laughs> and we put that thing together in six weeks, bro. Mm. Wow. Like, March, April. And the first mm. week of May was four fest. Wow. And, like, so that was kind of, again, the no rhyme, no reason, like, Four years in, we could execute that thing turnkey. Yeah. You know, we had the connections, we had the vendors, yeah. we had the ability to just turn it on. Um, and again, I know we're everywhere right now, but all over the map. Right. <laughs> nah. These all these conversations yeah. flow, right? right. But no, nah, it's good because like the more the more information you give, the more it's like certain things become more common. Like throughout this conversation conversation, I want people to be mindful of how a lot of your opportunities came between the lines. Oh my God. Yeah. It wasn't just like I'm in this club and I'm like, man, I want to throw the same party that they're having in this club. You were able to identify, you know, this, the people use this for frat parties. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to throw a whole festival here or, or, you know, like you said, if if somebody is somewhere, the, uh, the vision to be able to see something different happening in that space. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's so easy to get clouded by what's already going there. If mm-hmm. it's a store, if it's, you know, this type of party or that type of party, but you were able to put your vision into how it fit into any of these spaces. Yeah. And I think, you know, as we go through this conversation, like everybody will see that a lot of opportunities happen in that gray space. For sure. And being able to identify that is like, you know, it's, it's a gift yeah. that you have. Um, and even, you know, we done had events in, in, well, I think you had an event in like a warehouse storage space or was that the, uh, that might've been the Red Cup boys. What was that? The, I, I forget, up North, I forget. But anyways, like we done did some parties just anywhere. Yeah. Like, let's just find a space yeah. and turn it into whatever you can yeah. turn it into. So understanding the area's opportunity yep. and relationships, bro. That's the that's the main like everything yeah. that Dom's saying is all about a relationship. You know what sure. I mean? And, and that's I can relate to that to so much because that's what's really helped me and you. You know what I mean? You gonna be real? Like everybody yeah, in this room, yeah. like just yeah. relationships, yeah. knowing how to communicate with people, and really just being yeah. like genuine, like creating relationships, not looking for uh, a dollar or like, oh, I'm gonna be cool with this dude because right. you know, just yeah, really right. just being cool with yeah. him. And it's like, you know what? Hey. I like what you're doing. Couldn't do this. All right, cool. And then, <laughs> well, that's, I think that's 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 a heck of a point. There. This is, you know, at, at the end of the day, if you go into something expecting something in return, yeah. you're probably going nine times out of ten. Every time, you know, yeah. come up empty handed. Every time, so, you know. But if, if you truly, you know, come in with an open mind and, and just looking to connect with people and having a natural relationship in that sense, where right. it's not what can you do for me or what are you looking to get from me, you know, it, it just really solidifies and galvanizes people that's like i respect you first and foremost as a person and Absolutely. you become friends and you actually have genuine care for one another right then it's like oh let's see let's help each other win absolutely yeah. you know and it does it, it is one of those things that you know as i kind of sit as this quote-unquote figurehead of ohio's festival scene like man there's so many cats that were involved early on so many that and again it's to that end they may not be in the picture now mm-hmm. but you know, they're well aware of who they are. Mm-hmm. They know what role they played in that. 
And it's kind of, it's like the passing of the torch in a sense, because now for me, my role is much less than what it used to be. You know, I'm not as active in the festival yeah. space. We have Breakaway Festival, mm-hmm. right? And Number Fest essentially birthed Breakaway. Right. You know, and it was one of those things that everything that we learned in doing Number Fest in that field prepared us as reluctant as we were to take that leap when we came to Columbus in 2013 and we did the first year of Breakaway. You know, you had Kendrick Lamar, you had 21 Pilots, you had Bass Nectar, you had Juicy J, you had Schoolboy Q. Q. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I mean, like the lineup that we had put on, you know, we went from this cow field in the middle of rural Ohio, like, let's go to this MLS stadium in the city of Columbus. You know, and it was a hard lesson to learn that it didn't translate accordingly. It wasn't the same thing. Mm -hmm. Though we thought that we had it in the bag, Mm -hmm. we learned very quickly that you know, you, you got to grow, you yeah. got to change up the game. You got to, you know, understand what works and what doesn't work and yeah. what, what can carry over. And it was a, an expensive learning lesson for us <laughs> in that, in that sense. And that's also something, right? Like, as we're talking about road, less traveled and, you know, the stories of success are the few and far between. Yes, yeah, for sure. You know, I mean, wants to talk about that. Though, nobody wants to talk about that. You know, and, 10 uh, failures to get one. Hey, a hundred failures to man, get one win. You know, like I had a long night last yeah. night, right? You know, so it's like <laughs> right. we're trying to pull it together here on a Sunday morning. But, sure. you know, like like the facts are that, you know, it, it takes a, a, a serious amount of determination um, and, a, and a serious amount of stick to to pursue a life in business or as a career in a road less traveled. And there's yeah. a reason why it's less traveled. Right? Right. Sure. Because some people don't have it in them to take the beating. Right. Yeah. You know, and I, I wake up every day and I'm multiple in the mirror, multiple L's, but I'm like, consecutively too. Yeah. Like, not as just like, I'll take it, it's like consecutive yeah, L, L, yeah. L, that you look yeah. at something like, like, am I ever going to Right. Do I want to see you keep still doing this, but to find the wheel in this, like, are you just randomly running to somebody and you're like, hey, man, I love what you're doing. Then they kind of be like, damn, okay, I can't stop. Yeah, man. But, you know, it's like, I say it every day. I'm like, it's a war. Like yeah. I'm at war today. I'm at war tomorrow. I'm at war Tuesday. You I'm know? not going to give up on my right clients. Yeah. Way. You know, maybe it's on a personal level. Maybe it's with your child. Maybe it's with your significant other. Maybe it's with a client. Maybe it's with a new project. Maybe it's with yourself. Yeah, you know, but sure. like, man, that mentality, no matter how good it may be, no matter how long the winning streak may be, that war is a continual thing, you know? And, and that's just kind of been for me again, you know, Number Fest was, for the most part, a tremendous success. And it allowed me to provide for my child. And it, it put me in rooms and connected me with people that have since furthered my ability to grow as not only a businessman, but a person. But in that grandiose, you know, thing that everyone knows me for, the fact of the matter is it doesn't exist anymore. And the reason why it doesn't exist anymore is because it eventually failed. Mm-hmm. You know, it eventually cliffed. Yeah. And everything, J-curve until a certain point. It, and then it took a drastic turn. And there's multiple reasons why. But I think the, the brass tacks of it all is like, nothing is for certain. Nothing lasts forever. So that, until they close the curtain, you know, no. outcasts. Right. Right. It's like, yeah. you know, and it's, it's one of those things that like, right. that came and went. But what came from it was breakaway. And that's what, that's what I was, as you were talking through that, that's what came to my mind is when you said it failed, it's like, it's tough to see it. You see it both ways from the outside looking in. It's like, okay, that, you know, it may have reached its peak. And then the, you know, the, the value, the dollar amount may have went down, Yeah, but where it took you. Right. You know what I'm saying? It may have failed in one aspect, but the grand scheme of things, once you recoup and you get back, right. Yeah. It's like, oh, that was actually a win. You know what I'm saying? It actually led me to a place uh, that I wouldn't have been without it. And even not just, you know, monetarily, career-wise, but like you said, the relationships you made through there, the reputation you built for yourself, you know, taking the road less traveled, the road less traveled is the road less paved. Yeah. It's going to be more road bumps. It's going to be more, you know, you're going to trip and fall more times because it's just not a clear path. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're making it yourself. And when people, I, when people see that, when people see you overcome those things and build something that most people don't do, it gives yourself a higher level of credibility, higher level of respect, like, man, that dude, he did it. Like, you know what I'm saying? They want to be a part of it. They want to be a part of your journey and not to like keep bouncing back and forth and back and forth. 
But I do want you to touch on like who were some of the first artists that you brought? Yeah. How did you go about picking them? And they were like, you know, you you don't have relationships most of the time when you're in Columbus, Ohio, with these like huge artists or sure. Athens, Ohio. Yep. So how does how was that process going for somebody who wants to start but has no idea yeah, yeah. where to even look? You know, and again, like the 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 environment that is music now has changed so drastically. But so dr- rewind to 2004, and I count the first six festivals as strictly local friendly connections throughout the state of Ohio. There was no big acts whatsoever, but we put on plenty of people in and around the communities, Columbus, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Dayton. And that was really that. Then you go to Seven Fest. And that was my first true opportunity to book a national artist. And it was Mike Posner at the time. And Posner was kind of the king of the college. That's the the cool (laughs) And he was at Duke and he was doing these Ohio circuits. And the reason why I connected with him was because of my great friend, Patrick Klein. And Pat Klein was Posner's first promoter. Wasn't even his manager at the time, but he just was like, yo, I see this guy on Winamp or, you know, on LimeWire. And again, this is like, there was, Facebook was a thing, but, you know, MySpace just kind of became a thing. And so Posner was my first one, but that was solely predicated on a relationship that was built in Columbus. Yeah. And then fast forward to the next year and I, I was just randomly searching my inbox and I was deep and uh, I was trying to find this. Um, we were talking about Cameron and Mace and it is what it is. Mm-hmm. And again, bouncing around the industry standard mm-hmm. IS on all of our business cards and our discount cards on the front. It was just a black matte black and in white writing. It said, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. And then my dog, Ayo, my pit bull, so, like, it is so funny how you fast forward, Cam and Mace are smashing right. with it is what it is <laughs> right. and everything. They always leave with, hey, yo. Yeah, right, hey, right, yo, yeah. Pause, yeah. Hey, yo, pause. You know, so, like, <laughs> but, like, I circle back to 2005, my dog, 2007, <laughs> the shop. And, um, you know, so, like, I'm deep in these emails. And then I, I come across Ashley from MGK's team. And it, all it said, the email that she had sent from was, like, mgkbooking at gmail.com. And she had reached out to me after the Posner 7 Fest. And she was like, I represent Machine Gun Kelly. And, you know, we're, we would love to figure out how we can make this shake. And like, low key, I played her off. Like, I, like I looked back at that thread and there was like multiple days. And I told her I'd call her one day and I never hit her up. And then I replied back like a week later. I'm like, oh, life got in the way. I apologize. Mm-hmm. You know, let's find some time. I'll never forget looking at that. And it was like $2,000. That's what Kells wanted then. Mm-hmm. You know, so like we got it done. And then that's when you come into the right. mix, eight fest. Right. Right. But again, an Ohio connection. Yeah. Right. You know, so like that became kind of the the true, you know, repetitive nature of how we got the acts. Yeah. And it was once again predicated on reputation, yeah, but also network and affiliations. Yeah. That was this state driven thing. And then the next year, Nine Fest chipped the river. Right. So Chip came and that was kind of then that was like the triumphant. You know, Cuddy was the only other cat that I could pull. But at that point, Cuddy had day and night. He was yeah, not much. He was much bigger than I could afford in that moment. Um, and then, as is the case, man, like you can't really do everything by yourself. And after Eight Fest, you were there. You were there. Like you guys saw the magnitude of how insane that particular party was. It's unbelievable. And you know there was fifteen thousand people there. Couldn't believe it. I'm yeah, right. I never, I never would have thought like, yeah, you, this come, is, you know what I mean? Because I've never really been to OU. You know, a lot of yeah. people came down for the Halloween party and stuff. But like, that was my first. I was just like, yeah, this is different. And it, but also too was like, people knew who I was. I couldn't believe it. I was like, huh? They like, yeah. oh yeah, and like used to be from the Oka, right? I'm like, what? Yes, right. How the hell y'all even know me? Like, right. yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? So, but it was one of the things. So at that point, everybody has a ceiling. On their own, right. right? So that's when the team, the true team came into play. And that's when Zach, Adam, and myself joined forces, the prime social group guys. Yeah. You know, and Adam and Zach, they have since taken breakaway to new heights. You know, we're in 10 cities this year. But Nine Fest was the year that I was like, all right, I'm going to bring these guys in. We're going to create a, and form a true partnership. And then after that, that was when things really started to escalate because they – more or less solidified my ability to have relationships with the agencies 
I didn't even know agencies existed. I didn't know what William Morris was. I didn't know what CNN was. <laughs> right. These guys were, you know, they were a little more intellectually sound when yeah. it came because they were booking DJs. Mm-hmm. You know, so they're booking, you know, Tiesto and Steve Aoki and uh, Avicii, you know, like they were, they were bringing some heavy hitters on the EDM side. And I was, again, I'm a hip hop kid. Yeah. Like I grew up in the nineties and, and that was just kind of, I didn't listen to dance yeah. music. So I didn't, I wasn't even really hit to it. So that was kind of their spin on what we were doing with Number Fest. And I told them, I'm like, look, I've got the brand, you know, I've got the people. Yeah. Now you guys not only have capital, but you've got relationships and in, yeah. in the artists. So then you got, you know, Juicy J and the currency and the Kendrick and the Wiz into Schoolboy Q and Diplo and G Easy and I love McConan into you know Fetty Wap and the Chain Smokers and Lil Dicky into Fifteen Fest, which was the pinnacle for me when it came to the greatest lineup, the greatest day. You know that was you were heavy on the stage that bro, day. That that was uh that was the tackler was a part of that yeah and that lineup. Bro, you twenty one savage twenty one Migos Yachty Waka uh, was thug on that Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was yeah. and that's just hip, that's just the hip hop yeah. right that, that, I mean, that that particular and again like it's just funny how things occur because that again that that lineup will never happen never happen any really any I mean, maybe any, Coachella yeah. maybe right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rolling Loud sure right, 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 but right, like yeah. like to say in a, in a rural field in Ohio that yeah. in Two thousand. That lineup was insane. Yeah, you know, that was two thousand and seventeen. Yeah, you know, and again, like twenty one cost me twenty one grand, and the Migos cost me sixty G's, and Yachty cost me fifteen, and um, Thug cost me sixty. You know, now Thug's, Thug's about is, yeah, yeah Thug's, about, Thug's a half. Well, I'm about to say like, half a mil easy. Right, you know, twenty one. <laughs> we just had him at Breakaway last year for two fifty. You know, like when we had when when Gunna got the Rico charge. Mm-hmm. You know, it's crazy because Gunners obviously at the time was way hotter than 21. Right. But 21 could tax us more because mm-hmm. he knew we were in a bond. Mm-hmm. You know, so I was paying Gunner 225 and 21 was like, nah, 250 if you want me. Mm. And his set wasn't even that great. You know, ah. it was like, so again, like the, the whole booking and the whole talent acquisition thing, it wasn't really anything that I had truly done beyond getting us to a certain point. Yeah. And then, as is the case for anybody watching, anybody listening, like, you're only as good as your man to the right and to the left. Right. For sure. You know, and, and that's something that um, if, if folks can take away truly anything about team building and partnership and collaboration, yep. you know, be it formal or informal, be it spontaneous or planned, you know, like you, you, you really, really got to surround yourself with, you know, people that are willing to put in the work, people that you can trust, but at the same time, people that see your value. Yep. And that was kind of this beautiful symbiotic relationship that Zach, Adam, and myself had early on. They didn't know me. You know, I didn't know them. But like the vision was clear. Yeah. And I also knew what they could bring to the table and they knew what I had. So, you know, the give and the take was there. And any partnership, you guys have all been through it. You know, yeah. it, 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 there are good times and there are bad times. Absolutely. You know, because people are people, <laughs> right? You know, and, and, it, and it's not always the business. It right. could be anything. Exactly. You know, it's a different relationship. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And, you know, like, Again, it, just two of the biggest blessings in my life is, are, are Adam and Zach and the relationship and the, the culture that we kind of created. And, you know, and I was jokingly texting this, but, you know, like my tagline, put it on my tombstone is like, I fathered an entire generation of backstage experiences for people. The very first one. Big fact. You know? And I was going to touch on that because you mentioned relationships throughout this whole conversation. And one thing is you built these relationships scaling upwards, you know, with agencies and artists and, you know, yo, your, your networking, your circle just grew crazy, yeah. you know, with a lists all the way through. Yeah. But you never stopped bringing people up. You never stopped reaching out to the people who were doing things on the ground. Yeah. And Dez is on stage in front of 15,000 people. You know, we coming from nightclubs where yeah. if you got a thousand people, that's crazy. Uh, that's crazy. ice break. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. At the Newport, like, yeah. And you put Dez in front of 15,000 people. Yeah. Um, I'm sitting on stage. Migos performing. I'm looking out at 15,000. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's no reason I'm on stage. What do I, you know, I had no part of the show. Yeah. I'm on stage in front of 15,000 people. I'm, you know, on the streets moving tickets for the festival years in a row and doing merch for the festival. It's like, you know, and you always find a way 
to to help people come up to or just tap into what they got going on? How can would I be able to help you? Even if, you know, how much are you really making from me selling merch at your festival? Probably right. not anything. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. But at the end of the day, it's a it's an opportunity to just continue to build those relationships. You never know that one little dude selling merch at your oh. festival could become Virgil Abloh. You know what I'm saying? And and those relationships look more raised. <laughs> right. You know what yeah. I'm like, <laughs> that con's pants on. Yeah. Those Fontos, Dunk, SBs, mm-hmm. you know, like... They, I mean, again, like in right, and then like you said, not to cut you off, but like you said, put me in front of fifty thousand. Then, then brings breakaway fest. It's like it's your time to shine again, this. Then, well, originally I was supposed to do the one with Travis Scott. Remember? Yeah, we ain't gonna talk about you know what I mean. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it get tricky sometimes. Mm-hmm. Don was like, "Don't worry about it. Next year, make sure there's no there's no red tape." Boom, put me on. Then come back the following year, your time to shine again. Then, so then it's like. It's crazy. I still got the video. I play it all the time, bro. Me and Tron. Got the, the guys. Yeah, yeah, that's not, that's the, the, the motocross. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And we out there, and we had the crowd going so crazy. The crowd was going so crazy, and we're doing this right before uh, Smoke Perk comes along. We got that stage going so crazy. Smoke Perk, Perk's people come to Dom. It's like, you got to get them off. We like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Dom was like, yeah, it's like, light, bro. We, yeah, we like, got to live up to bro, that. Bro, like, when, when, when one of your co headliners <laughs> knows that the hosts, <laughs> have gotten it to a point that they can't match yeah, in that market. We like, what? Crazy. Crazy. Man, like, what? He was just like, man, I can't do nothing, man. They said, y'all got to go to crack. Y'all got to get off. Hey, like, so. It's like that. <laughs> no, but that'd be real. You made a great point in that, like, again, man, it's, um, it's, it's the whole premise of paying it forward. And as a kid, as uh, college, you know, going back to the sports administration program and the admission scenario, right? Like that woman blessed me. Like she changed my life. She tr- truly, she was, a, a very key cog in us sitting here today, yeah. you know, and she's probably pushed. She's a grandmother at this point, yeah. you know, she might be close to 65 years old and, you know, she doesn't know she ain't right. going to see this, yeah. you know, but again, she just saw some random 21 year old college kid. And yeah. She was like, I like that guy, you yeah. know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll give him this opportunity and see what he does with it. And that's just kind of how, again, man, like we all come from humble beginnings. Like I, I come from dirt. You know, I was born in the Ohio Valley in Steubenville. My pops worked in a steel mill. Like, you know, we we were not what you would consider well off by any means. Yeah. And, you know, by the grace of God through through life, you know, people assist and they they yeah, bring you along sure. in certain ways. And, um, you know, it's just kind of always been my nature. And, and again, you know, we're, we're, we're talking to these cameras, but there are folks on the other side, especially with the communities that you guys have mm-hmm. built and the communities that Soul Classics has is, you know, it doesn't cost you anything to give somebody an opportunity, to give them a chance, you know? And, and if anybody can take anything away from it right. is, again, it goes back to the idea of like, search for the no. And, and if you're also somebody who's sitting here waiting for a chance, waiting for somebody to bless you or give you that opportunity, you know, forever. you wait forever. <laughs> you you wait really, forever. really going to yeah. wait forever, <laughs> you know? So, so from the jump is, is, be willing to to just jump out there and try what you believe in. Be be open minded to see what's going on in the gray area. It's not being afraid to hear the word no. Yeah. It's actually looking for it. Yeah. And then figuring out how to get around. Exactly. It's it's being brave enough to take the risk, mm-hmm. not knowing what's on the other side. Yep. Throughout the whole journey is people seeing that. There's people watching you. And there's people understanding like that, that dude's different. Like, and the, and the journey's continue, you know, they're, yeah. they're keeping their eye on you for yeah. when things align. Um, there's friendships, relationships, there's dot connecting. There's, there's just so many pieces that make up where you're at that you probably weren't even like super mindful of oh, at man. the time. Yeah. Yeah. So before we like wrap this up and, and, and in this conversation, I do want to know some of the challenges yeah. that you face, yeah. you know, so when people watch this and they, they want to, they want to start their journey, whatever it may be. And they run into some of those challenges. Mm-hmm. They, a lot of people quit. A lot of people yeah. stop. Yeah. Some people got it in them to keep going, you know? So, so tell us about some of those challenges. And then I want to hear like some of the greatest advice you got and some of the greatest advice you'd be get. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Say that because like, that's, I'm glad you brought that up real because I, I wanted Don to talk about that too because one thing that he uh, he said early and I feel like it, it's extremely important to, to bring to the forefront is he said every day he's at war. You know what I mean? Right. With self, with others, relationships. So like 
Like real say, like what keeps you going, bro? Because there's a there's a lot of things along your journey where you could have been like, I'm cool, bro. I'm about to just go get a nine to five. I know enough people with. where I right. You know what I mean? I know enough job. people. Yeah, you know I saying? can. You know what I mean? I can go work at somebody's office. You yeah. know what I mean? So, well, in in it, this is this is a, a, a brief segue here, but that that in itself is a great point that um, as an entrepreneur, as a creative, as somebody who may start something, that may just position you eventually to land a very great role within another organization and becoming a W-2 employee and going and clocking that nine to five. Sure. Because truth be told, again, the entrepreneurial journey, there is isn't there is no guarantee that it lasts forever. At all. You know, there is no guarantee that it, it's a win, you know, that the journey. Ever it's it's, one, it's yeah, really not right. glamorous, bro. Right. No, it, it is really not all. glamorous but at all. in that sense of, you know, like there is nothing wrong with working for an organization. Yeah, that's a misconception. Yeah. People feel like you, you fail for working a job. Like, yeah. Uh, like some people, just, you know what I mean? some people are better right. at working at a job than yeah. like, being their own book. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. You know, so um, that in itself is, you know, coming back to the idea of the pitfalls or, or what kind of uh, failures or, or hardships that, that we faced along the way. Um, again, man, like there is way more L's than there are W's, right? But the W's far outweigh the losses. You know, I got a, a tattoo on my arm that says lost some, won most, you know, and it's like that is true in the sense that no one's undefeated. Yeah. You know, if, if you go into anything you're doing with the understanding that like you're probably going to get beat down a little bit, yeah. you know, it's the Rocky Balboa, you know, really? the, 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 the wonderful moment he has with his kid where like, you know, nothing is going to beat you down by life. You know, it's not matter. It doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down. It matters how many times you're going to get back up. Right. You know, and that's that's really, I could go on and on. We could sit here and do a whole other hour segment of just the the brutal, yeah. the brutal challenges. The You know, again, this is a PG segment because right. Deontay's running this thing, but right. like the ass whoopings right. that I've received, you know, both, you know, monetarily, right. sometimes physically, you know, yeah. I've, I've been in the trenches yeah. in, in that way, you know, and, and, you know, the challenges exist solely because, they have to exist because that's just life, yeah. you know? And I've lost a bunch of money. You know, we, we won, but we've also taken tremendous L's. And um, that in itself is entrepreneurship in a nutshell. It's like, you have to understand that, yeah, you, you're putting your own money up. Yeah. And oftentimes you're not going to see it back right away. You know, yeah. in the grand scheme, if you add it all up, hopefully you come out on top. But, you know, challenges exist in many forms. And, you know, with NumberFest, our challenges became uh, external from the state of Ohio. You know, at, that year that you guys were on stage in front of 15,000 people and our transportation system became an issue. So you have to get 17,000 kids back to their campus, which is two miles away. How are you going to get them there? Well, they're going to walk. What are they going to walk on? The state highway. You know, you got 17,000 kids cruising down the street at 11 p.m. That's going to create some ways within the political landscape. You know, so the state of Ohio became a challenge for me uh, where they were like, nah, you can't do it like that no more, you know? And uh, so we had to pivot and the BYOB segment of NumberFest went away. And when the BYOB segment went away, then the kids were like, well, hold up. Yeah. We ain't, <laughs> what do you mean? Right. We can't bring our own booze. Right. And it's like, well, you can still drink, but we're going to sell it to you. Right. Uh, well, how much are you going to sell it to me for? Well, I got to sell it to you at X. Right. I got to cover my costs for the operation. And they're like, well, you got to acquire right, yeah. proper license to sell all it, that, all yeah. of that. So those challenges existed externally at NumberFest. Breakaway, the challenges of starting a new event in a new market with an entire new premise and a new direction, you know, that L that we received, you know, that that financial blow was, it sank the shit, literally, like the company was done. We threw one breakaway, and then the very next week we went to Dallas, Texas, and we threw breakaway, and we had Wu-Tang headline. And we had a couple other acts and we got it handed to us, bro. We just, we get, we were decimated financially. So that challenge occurred. And then, you know, you, your personal life becomes challenging and, you know, you're a single father to two beautiful girls. I'm a single father to a beautiful girl. Des, one day you're going to be a married <laughs> father, you know, creating a beautiful, you know, symbiotic household with probably two, three, four beautiful girls. But you know, those challenges exist. And, you know, how do you um, balance yeah. the idea of like, I got to raise this kid, but I also got to build this brand, you know? Yeah. And 
um, you know, challenges are, are they're bountiful. Um, but at the end of the day, there isn't any challenge that's too great to stop any man or woman who has the desire to keep on pushing, you know? And it, it, for me, it's like, I can't necessarily pinpoint uh, something that like sticks out to me just because I've had so many crazy things happen to me, yeah. you know, like if rewind to July, you know, like the last time y'all were really, anybody in the city was talking about me, it was, I got carjacked in the middle right. of downtown. Yeah, that was you crazy. Know? And, wow. Uh, and, and instead of just being like, bet, take it, I was like, not today. Right. You know? That was crazy. And, you know, like. That footage was wild. Yeah. yeah. You know, but, and again, like, right. of course, my ass got ring camera footage of me flipping my Cadillac Escalade with two dudes inside who were shooting at me, you know, and on Franklin Avenue. Right. You know, like, that's a challenge, yeah. you know? And, and that became a thing where I broke my foot. I had to deal with some things. I couldn't go do Breakaway Kansas City. Because I was laid up. I couldn't go do breakaway mission because I was laid up, you know, back when we had industry standard. Yeah, again, like East 8th and High was a very different place. Very different place. <clears throat> the library was cracking back right. then. Right. You know, <laughs> long white tees, right. two cell phones. Yeah. And, you know, like like seeing that environment on High Street back in 07, 08 and having our store broken into repeatedly. You guys have experienced it yeah. at all your retail spaces. Yeah. Um, there's always outside factors that are going to try their best to prohibit you and limit you from achieving whatever goal you may be setting. And that to me is the whole premise of like, we're at war, you know, and it's not this physical, you know, vulgar, terrible thing that we see uh, in real war in real life. But like, if you just understand that, like nothing is going to be handed to you, nothing is going to come easy. And at the end of the day, you're probably going to have to like literally sit your butt down and, ask somebody, some higher being for some kind of help, you know, sure. and, and that's kind of, for me, um, you know, that, that's, that in a nutshell would be like the challenges exist no matter what, man. No, uh, uh it's <clears throat> no matter what path you're going, even if you just try to take the path of least resistance, mm -hmm. there's going to be challenges. So the yeah. bigger, you know, they, it's, it's a common saying, the bigger the risk, the bigger the reward that, yeah. you know, the, the road that's least paved comes with the most challenges. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, with all that being said, little Dom right here, 20 years old, mm -hmm. knowing what he's about to go into, mm -hmm. you know, you got a little, you're 20, so you got a little bit of information, but you have no clue what's right. about to happen. Yeah. What are you telling him? <laughs> Keep your head on a swivel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like, you know, real talk, you know, right. I mean, again, the, the, and I, and I'm in a scenario now where I have Magnolia, she's 14 years old and, and I can kind so of, are. I can kind of. You know, that, the six-year gap, yeah. you know, like her at 14 is damn near further advanced than I was yeah. at 20. Yeah, you she know, really is. Information like wise. I was about to say, man, I don't even live the light, bro. Right She's the star, bro. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, but, all, none of this is new to her. Yeah, like, so like <laughs> the idea of like me talking to my younger self is almost in a sense me talking to my child who has somewhat, you know, from intellectual perspective, from a, an emotional capacity perspective, from just an experience perspective. At 14, she's lived two lifetimes compared to what I had at 20. But, you know, I, I relay this to her all the time. And this was the same thing that I would tell myself back then. What I now know is you control everything about your destiny. There are many outside factors. There are many folks that may come and go. But truly, at the end of the day, the one thing that you can dictate is your effort and your attitude. And if you were willing to put forth that in any instance, any circumstance, then you control everything about where you want to go and where you want to take it. So for me, looking back and understanding what I know now, you know, there isn't truly anything that you can't accomplish. If you've got the gusto, if you've got the, the stick to itiveness, and I use that word a lot and, and it's such a throwback archaic term, but it is truly everything that I embody is that you're going to come up short. You're going to get beat down, but you have the ability, unless you're dead. You know, yeah. if you're breathing, you're still able still to stand breathing. on two yeah, feet, yeah. you know, then you got a shot. Yeah. You know, and, and for me, that is um, is something that I, I think back a lot because you, when you're younger, you're naive. Yeah. You know, you really, truly are. Super. And, and it's one of those things that you do think that you know everything, you know, and, and we talk to the youth a lot and we interact with these kids a lot. And even with Magnolia, you know, she looks at me like, man, you dumb. 
Like, she know. calls me bro all the time. Days, it's like, bro, you won't even know. Like, okay, right, right. Yeah, right sure. You'll see, yeah, you'll, you'll see, you know. But like, but the fact of the matter is, nonetheless, like everything that you want, you can have if you're willing to put up the effort, if you're willing to put in the work. And, you know, that that's kind of for me is is something that, you know, I think resonates with everybody in the room. Definitely. Um, you know, and it it's it goes without saying that, you know, we we've all we have all seen it all. For sure. sure. The good and the bad. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And and one thing I'm probably gonna bring up in every single interview that we do is you started this conversation back how many uh, tw- twenty years ago. Yeah. And it's never, you know, most people, they want that success right away or, you know, year three, mm-hmm. I should be, I should be here by year three. I've been doing this for three years. Yeah. The, the needle don't move like that. The needle nah. move like this, sometimes back down, sometimes, you know, it's a journey. It's yeah. a very long journey. Yeah. And sometimes you got to be able to go five years without seeing a penny. Yeah. You, know, you might lose for five years straight. Yeah. You know, so it's that, it's, it's, this is a long road to get to where you at. Some, mm-hmm. some people's journey is, is. You know, some people hit that that ceiling in month one and they just blow up and never look back. Yeah. But most people, you know, it's it's a long journey. And looking back at all the memories and all the moments, I'm sure, you know, some of those hits felt like you might not even want to wake up the next day. Yeah. But now when you look back at the journey, it's all of those things make who you are today. Yeah. They give you all the information and knowledge you have, but they give you a life worth of memories. Yeah. And yeah. life worth of uh, just things to look back and enjoy. So- Talking about all these concerts, all these festivals. If you got five artists, I already know I'm promoting the festival. Dez is hosting it. Yes. I already know that. I already. That's, <laughs> I knew you was going to pick that, so I, you don't even have to say it. It's easy. But outside of us two, you got five artists. They could be a mix. It don't matter. You're not. You're not. Prom- you're not playing to a specific crowd. This is you. You're the only person in the crowd. Yeah. Who's up there, man? All right. So that's like. That's, they don't even have to be lit. No, I feel okay. So that's a crazy. I mean, that's a crazy question, right? right? You know, what I mean, like right. the the depths to which um, musically. I mean, golly. Um, all right, first and foremost, so I'm kind of do a, an alumni section mm-hmm. of said lineup because we've been uh, in a position to have pulled some of the craziest that there ever were. So right. I'm gonna throw Kendrick out there, number one. Kendrick, now, I mean, I know you guys were at the show two years yeah. ago which to me was the greatest hip hop show I've ever seen for sure uh, at the shop. And um, so I'm putting Kendrick out there. Um, number two, and it's Mount Rushmore stuff, man. It ain't <laughs> easy. Uh, I never had him, but I'm gonna put Ye out there. Uh, for because sure. it's, it's just one act that I, I never got. Uh, number three, Hove for sure. Easy. Um, again, somebody that essentially, you know, from reasonable doubt, blueprint one, blueprint two, you know, all the way through Black Album and Beyond, like that was really truly uh, a pivotal, a pivotal artist for me, and, and somebody that not only molded my taste in music, but also you know, kind of put us on game through his sure. music. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, so you know, K Dot, Yay, Hove, um, and then I'm a pivot, and I'm gonna go kind of left to center on this one. Uh, but in my household, growing up, you know, oldies and Motown was always a crazy thing. I, I, it was always being played, grandparents, parents, aunts, uncles. Um, you know, so like the OG Temptations, I would definitely like to see <laughs> it some way. Yeah, yeah. Imagine if you had Yay in the Temptations, <laughs> Kendrick, right. and just, right. you know, but like like the original, like, right. you know, like David Ruffin mm-hmm. as the lead, yeah. you know, right. like that Temptations. Uh-huh. And then number five, just if there's so many but uh i have an eclectic taste of music and truly like if i if i had to take one artist in in any instance any circumstance from trapped on a deserted island for the rest of my days i'm gonna i'm gonna let bon Iver run so justin vernon you know his band bon mm-hmm. Iver. um and again justin vernon made hits right. for every rap artist that i just right. said right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> left to center Crazy, right? right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. but like again, and again, we could do this all day, right? Yeah, like we could sure. go, we could go around. I'm sure, five was very yeah, difficult. But like just picking and choosing reasons and things of that nature is like, um, again, man, we're, we're hip hop, we're hip hop kids. Maybe yeah, we put sure. up on it, and that's that's you know, your MTV raps and you know the basement, and right. like to this day, like I can 
I could just spin Cameron's and when he was in the booth, mm -hmm. you know, like I could listen to that every yeah. stop, you know, yeah. like, like everything that, that I am in the music game is predicated on at a certain point in time, my love and affinity for hip hop music, you know, so I'm always going to lead with it, but man, like I'll throw out a six just because there's, there's a whole new generation. Fred again, the DJ. I don't know if you guys are hip yeah, to Fred yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Fred again, I would love to. I've never got to see a show or, or anything like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm familiar with that. Do yourself a solid and watch Fred again's tiny desk. And then number seven, lucky number seven, just because he's my brother, he's y'all's brother, Turnstile. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring Turnstile. We're going to let Freaky Franz. Freaky. Yes. <laughs> let Franz, you know, come and, and no. close it out. No. No. And, you know, Jay-Z and Kanye yeah. can open up for Freaky. Right. That would be a full circle moment. <laughs> yeah, so that that would be the top seven. We're playing seven on seven spring ball. That's the uh, that's the lucky that's number seven cool. lineup, man. Dope, man. Dope, yeah, man. And, and I appreciate uh, we got to do a part two because there's yeah. so many things that we didn't get to touch on. Because know, the man. journey's so long. Yeah. There's yeah. so many more gems. But, you know, what you gave us is priceless. Yeah, man. It's, you know, like I said, this whole thing, bro, is just about inspiring. It's about opening up people's minds to, you know, things that they don't typically learn in school or, yeah. you know, anywhere. It's like, yeah. you know, what what else is out there for me? A lot of us don't really know what we want to do. And so the information that you're giving can really help somebody along their journey, really help somebody get started. Or somebody who just took a big L yeah. and they want to give up and they want to quit. Man. Um, so we really appreciate that, man. And we appreciate everything you've done for us of course, along man. our journeys. And even, you know, Jordy, the last guest mm -hmm. that, that we had, you know, he had a stage at Numbers Fest. Animal House. Yeah, yeah. Animal House stage, stage. Yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying? So, so yeah. the relationships, man, everything that you mentioned. It's, it's not just talking. It's like, we got, this is documented. Yeah. You know, this well, is and I want to, you know, I, and I want to reiterate the same admiration for you guys, because again, though I may have had a platform per se mm -hmm. to give you guys opportunities, the opportunities wouldn't have existed without you guys having my back in the first place. Oh, I without you guys holding me down. Mm -hmm. Even when necessarily we may not have known mm -hmm. each other mm -hmm. to the depths that we do today. But, <clears throat> you know, it's one of those things for me that, you know, you guys can sit here as a collective, just the people that are within your circle, mm -hmm. your family now. And you guys don't even need outside guests because you right. guys are the knowledge. I mean, you guys have, you guys have lived and, and experienced and, and won and lost. And mm -hmm. you have essentially taken the reins in many aspects of culture within the state of Ohio. Um, something that I maybe put my stamp on in a different time in our lives. But you guys are the ones that are making it happen now. And it's just like these moments and these platforms that you're creating for guys like myself to come back and tell an old story. The stories that you guys are building and doing in the moment, you guys are creating the moments now, yeah. you know, and and that to me is what I would consider like the the true win in all of this. For sure. Is that like maybe something, and this goes for everybody, you know, maybe something that you do at a certain point in your life could become a springboard for a whole gang of people yeah. who will then go well beyond yeah. what you did, you know, and that's why I look at you guys now. You know, because I'm sitting in your store, you know, I'm on your podcast, you know, I'm telling an old story, but it, truly you guys are the ones, man. So appreciate I appreciate it. you guys appreciate having me. I appreciate it. You know, sure. man, you got, you already know, man. And I yeah. tell everybody this, I always say this, man, but you know, I love you guys. You know, and it, it, I appreciate it. Likewise. It's one of those things that like, yeah. you know, it, it ain't, it ain't no slick talk. You right. Know? No, real. right. Yeah, you, know, you guys. Yeah. Now, again, I, I joke sometimes, but I still got it in me. You know, yeah. We can go lay somebody down right. somewhere. You know, you, you, know, you know I'm ready. <laughs> right, so, sure. Right, sure. Right, man. Love, appreciate you, man. I, I, I got, dog, you know I love you, yeah, bro. Yeah, man, love you, man. For sure. Sir. Yeah.